Good morning, everyone. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us come into the house of the Lord. Welcome to the house of the Lord at Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church. We welcome everyone here and everyone who is watching you stream. Uh, we are going to have a wonderful day today. Uh, we want to remember those who have lost loved ones recently uh, and those who are sick. Uh, Donna and Jimmy Lee. Donna Duncan was here today, and uh, which was great for her and us. Uh, Lou Ann Coggin is at Brookwood. Is she home? Okay. She was at Brookwood. She's at home now, so that's good. Um, Cindy Usher is having some blood pressure problems. Uh, and Donna Duncan's sister-in-law, Rhonda Carroll, has a leg infection around her uh, knee replacement, so we need to remember her. Also, uh, Disciple 2 will meet today after church in the fellowship hall. Uh, that next Saturday, there is going to be a Pleasant Grove community cleanup day. And it is put on by the beautification board and all the churches here in Pleasant Grove. Everyone meets at Bethel Baptist Church at 8. It's from 8 to 12. Um, and they're wanting to get 17 teams to go to the ro entrance roads into Pleasant Grove, like Fairfield, Hueytown, Dolomite, and get them cleaned up, wear long pants and gloves, and uh, come out and, and support the community and help it uh, look better. If it's a rain day, the event will be on April the 8th. So uh, that, that's good that they've got a backup day. But I think our community could use a little facelift in the entrance road. So if you can come, uh, bring your gloves and come on. And, and now Susie Travis has an announcement for us. How are y'all? Uh, as you know, we have a church uh, Facebook page and we have a web page. And we would like to know what you would be interested in either seeing or reading about on our church's Facebook page as well as our web page. And the address to our web page is on the, on the front of the bulletin. It's www.pgumpgum.org. So you can let me know if there's something in particular that you are interested in. One of the things that's on uh, our webpage right now are different topics that you can read about or study. One of them is prayer. And we've posted some prayers that you can pray for your children because Lord knows <laughs> we need to be praying for our children. There are some text documents that you can read or print out, but there's also some uh, audio uh that you can listen to if you want to uh, listen to the prayer about praying for your children. There's also a set of prayers uh, praying for your adult children. They, they come with issue, a set of issues and problems there of their own. So uh, there's all kinds of things that you can be praying for. Also on that, under the topic of prayer, you can pray for our nation, our leaders, and even your spouse. So there, there are already many topics on the page that, you know, if you're interested, click on them. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is our Sunday school class is starting a new study in a couple of weeks, and we'll be uh, dealing with some of the issues that we have today. We're going to use our Bible. We'll see what uh, Bible verses are pertinent and what the Bible has to say about certain things. Uh, so we'll begin that in about two weeks, but we're also going to start posting uh, a video of the lesson so that you can go back to the church's webpage and watch the video. You know, if if you want to learn more about it, but you don't want to miss your Sunday school class, that, that'll be a possibility. So uh, if you have any suggestions, just let me know. Okay. Our spirit team will come up now. Uh, 
happy birthday to Alpha. Let's sing to her. What'd you say? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alpha. Happy birthday to you. I told her she sets a high mark. <laughs> Let's stand to sing. <laughs> well, just whenever you're ready. <laughs> that, I think that was uh, a different song, maybe. <laughs> Tell me of a home far beyond the skies, and they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless days. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky.
Jesus as my Savior, you take him to talking about love this morning in Sunday school. It's an unearned gift is what we learn. So this next song is all about the great gift of God's love. Oh, 
together in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, today we want to tell you that we do love you and we thank you for your love. It's all around us whether we notice it or not. You do so many things. You bless us so many ways. You give us so many opportunities to witness for you. Lord, we pray for this church and by praying for this church we mean the families of this church, this congregation. There's so many needs. There are people who are recovering from illnesses. There are those who are facing surgeries. There are those who are dealing with afflictions. There are those who are dealing with problems in relationships. There are those who are dealing with so many things. Often we don't even know. As we look at each other, as we speak at each other, help us to think, Lord, a little deeper. Does that person need our prayer? Do I care? Because we don't know. Help us not to pass by an opportunity, Lord, to show your love through us because we know it's your mercy and your grace that brought us here to be a Christian, to worship you today. Lord, for those who do not know you, we pray for them that they would seek to find out what it means to become a child of Christ. Lord, for this community, we pray that you would be with us and all that goes on, that we'll be a strong community, that we would be a moral community, that we would be an upright community, and that there would be brotherhood through this community. Lord, be with us today as we come to exalt your name, to praise you and thank you for the holy word that we read and study to guide our lives. Lord, we ask that you hear our prayer and that you be with the one who comes to lead us today that you would open our minds and our hearts to hear your word. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Now let's have the children come for the children's minute. when your teacher has to miss school, you have a substitute teacher. Yeah, Miss Lorraine, Miss Lorraine called me this week, and she said that she had to be out today, and she asked me if I would be her substitute. Is that okay with you? Is that okay with you? Okay. This is, today's lesson is about things that God dislikes. What do you think God dislikes? The devil. He likes people. He dislikes bad behavior. Oh. He dislikes sarcasm. Oh, yeah, I think. 
Okay. Well, today the story is about, and this is Miss Lorraine's story, is about things that God dislikes. The eyes of the Lord are, are all seeing. And do we always remember that? With our behavior, do we always remember that the eyes of the Lord see you all the time? They do. These are six things that the Lord hates. But seven of them, he has seven things that he, he really, really doesn't like. Detestable. He calls them detestable. And that means he dislikes these sins. Haughty eyes and a lying tongue. Now, you know what a lying tongue is. Do you know what haughty eyes are? Do you ever get mad at your friend and do that? Roll your eyes at them and look at them like they might not be as smart as you or as good as you. Do you ever look at them like that? Yeah. Um, and hands that shed innocent blood, a mind that plans wicked schemes, feet that are in a hurry to do evil, a false witness who utters lies and who causes trouble between brothers. So, here's what we need to remember. We need to remember not to think that we're better than anyone else and brag about the things we have. Do we do that sometimes? I think we do, but that's one of the things that, that, that God really doesn't like, so we need to remember that. Uh, we need to remember not to take any innocent person's life. I think we're safe on that one right now, don't you? I don't think, I think, but sometimes you can hurt someone's life. Okay, you can change their life maybe with the things that you say or do or how you treat them. So we need to be careful that way too. Uh, think of wicked things to say or do to your friends or family. <gasps> now we've got brothers and sisters up here. Would we ever do that? Oh, Elias would do that. Okay, so that's hard to do when you're with your family all the time, isn't it? Okay. Um, so, um, you should never do evil things to people, tell lies, or try to cause bro trouble with your brothers and sisters. Did we see some fingers pointing just then? Do you think we might have been trying to cause some trouble for our brothers and sisters? If you try your very best not to do any of these things, God will be pleased with you. If you do happen to do any of those things, you need to pray to God for forgiveness. Because he loves you, and he will forgive you if you just ask. Okay? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I know that you will forgive sins when asked. Send down your Holy Spirit to surround these children with love. We are so grateful for your never-ending love and kindness. Amen. Wait, 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 wait. We had a, a meeting this morning in Sunday school about how to act in Sunday school and church and all that, and I told the kids that I was going to you know, give them a few more rules to, that we need to follow when we're in church. One of the things is, and I noticed when they were sitting up here on the front row today, y'all were great. We had adults <laughs> spaced out enough, y'all were really good. And it looks like you cleaned up. I see some paper over there, so I need you to clean that up next time, okay? Now, the next thing we're going to remember is whoever our leader is, and today it's Robin, right? Okay, so Robin is going to be the line leader, <laughs> and y'all are going to line up behind Robin, and when you leave to go to Children's Church, you're going to walk to Children's Church. You're not going to run and hide from Robin, understand? <laughs> All right, so if you'll remember those things, and I noticed there was a little bit of playing going on up here today, so we need to keep our hands to ourselves and listen to whoever's talking, okay? Thank you. Now, Ms. Robin. Let's stand together as we sing our next hymn, number 384, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. You may be seated. <laughs> Susie, you get AA plus 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 for effort. They're gonna they're gonna get used to this. I know. Um, this morning, as we gather, um, let us be in prayer for Hootie. Uh, Mary Jo went home to check on him and. Uh, just keep him in your prayers. And you know, God does the most amazing things giving you the opportunity to have pastoral visits where you least expect it, like at Hills with Margie and um, the barbecue place with Emily Roman. Uh, keep Emily in your prayers. And uh, if you get a chance, give her a call, drop her a card. Um, just let her know you're thinking about her. And uh, let's also remember uh, Donna, Duncan, and Jimmy. Uh, Donna's uncle passed away, D Duncan, and uh, they're not in worship this morning because they're on their way to that funeral. So we just remember them as they travel, that the Lord will watch over them and keep them safe. And I told Donna, I am so grateful I did not have to give her up for Lent. Um, we have so missed her on the worship team and, of course, just her ministry that she does here at the church. Brothers and sisters, um, you know, God finds the most amazing ways to communicate with us and to remind him of his presence. And I know yesterday I was passing um, through the living room to the kitchen, and I love to watch the birds. And I noticed my lone dove out there on the railing of the deck. And uh, I'm pretty sure it must be the partner for the one that uh, Mitzi got a little too feisty with. And it just kind of tugged at my heart, that little dove all by itself sitting there on the edge of that rail. But before long, a couple of bluebirds floated along, and then this little teeny brown wren came along to the feeder. I mean, all within like a space of that much time. Hopped over the back of the dove, the cardinals came. It was just the sound, the color, and uh, just reminding us so much about how good God is and how present he is with us and that even that little lone dove has a community, has a song to sing and uh, a beautiful, colorful world to live in, which we do as well. So as we are in this season of Lent, um, let us really and truly deeply enter in um, examining our own lives, thinking about uh, the price that Jesus has paid so that we um, can be loved, so that we can share in community, so that we can experience the grace of God, how good God is to all of us in whatever our circumstances are, whatever our situations are. Remember to seek him, to sit a spell uh, in his presence and at his feet. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Lord, we thank you so much for the love that you have shown to us through creation, through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for the debt that has been paid for our sin and our wayward ways. Lord, for the resurrection that gives us hope and that points us to a future. And um, as we instruct our children, may we also be instructed about how important our behavior is, how important our witness is as we walk through the ordinariness of our day, as we come and go. Lord, may we be mindful of the witness and uh, that we are to others and uh, the light that we are in a, in a dark world, that we can be if we stay really close to you and if we really commit our lives to you. Lord, this life is an adventure and a journey, and we sometimes forget that. So help us in the midst of all of our days and all of our troubles and all of our joys to remember that we are not alone on this journey, that you are with us. You go before us. You go with us. And uh, we have nothing to fear. Lord, bless us in this season of Lent as we seek your face, as we seek to draw near to you. We pray these things. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
he paid the price and Jesus bore it all. I've heard them sing, I'm coming home and hear the master's call. I've heard them sing the modern songs and songs of long ago. But amazing grace, how sweet the sound is, the sweetest song I know. Amazing grace, it's how sweet the sound, no sweeter song could ever be found. I've heard of a fountain filled with blood, but amazing grace, how sweet the sound, it's the sweetest song I know. It was a song my mother sang in sweet and humble voice Like music from the world above it made my soul rejoice In soothing words and melody like rippling waters flow But amazing grace how sweet the sound is the sweetest song I know Amazing grace how sweet testimony right from the middle of the church. Eloise, you may have just started a trend. We may get some more amens and <laughs> praise God and all that wonderful stuff. <laughs> Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, from chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. If you are able, stand for the reading of God's holy word. A few minutes later, some Pharisees said to him, Get out of here if you want to live, because Herod Antipas wants to kill you. Jesus replied, Go tell that fox that I will keep on casting out demons and doing miracles of healing today and tomorrow, and the third day I will accomplish my purpose. Yes, today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must proceed on my way, for it wouldn't do for a prophet of God to be killed except in Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers, how often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And now look. Your house is left to you empty, and you will never see me again until you say, Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, the picture of a hen gathering her brood under her wings is a deeply moving portrait of God. And I think that picture up there, I hope, communicates that. So, like Jesus, to use a true-to-life metaphor that speaks to the depth of God's love for humankind. Did you know that hens each have their own distinctive call? one that's recognized by their little chicks, and they use their wings to protect their young, covering them, hiding them from predators like snakes and hawks and cats and the like. They are willing to sacrifice their own life in doing so. And there are other birds, too, that do this as well, There is an Indian evangelist, and I won't try to pronounce his name, but I have it if you would like it, who observed this firsthand, and he tells a story about a bird protecting its young from a fire. And he says, when the bird's nest caught fire, he said, I thought to myself, now the mother bird will fly away. But he says, instead, to my astonishment, I saw her fly down and spread her wings over the new young little chicks, her little birds. In a few minutes, the poor bird was burnt to ashes along with all of her youngsters. I had never seen anything like it before, he said. To those who were standing near him, he continued on, Are we not astonished at this wonderful love? Think how much more wonderful must be the love of him who has created such an unselfish love in his creatures. The same infinite and unselfish love brought Jesus Christ down from heaven into this world to become man that by giving his own life, he might save us who are dying in our sins. John tells us that God is love, those three little words. So the journey that began with creation is one of love, the love of the creator for all of his creation. It is a journey of a faithful long-suffering, and patient God who is unquenchable, never-ending, and all-encompassing. His love, that is, is unquenchable, never-ending, and all-encompassing. How we would love to be able to love as the Father loves. Amen? From generation to generation, from covenant to covenant, God has called, wooed, whatever word you want to use, humanity back to himself to love and to be loved. He has loved in the face of rejection. He has loved in spite of humanity's indifference. He has loved in the person and the life of Jesus, his beloved son, the ultimate expression of his love toward us. And it was this love that walked those hard trails of Galilee and spoke to the hard hearts of the religious. It was this love that left heaven, brothers and sisters, to enter our mess. And it was this love that was ultimately rejected. John says, Jesus was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. God created humanity. He sought their affection and purchased their redemption. But in return, humanity has consistently rejected him, jeering at him, mocking his holy name, 
some claiming that he doesn't even exist. We get a glimpse of the heart of God, of the love of God, when Jesus utters those words, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. We sense the broken heart of Jesus, God the Son, and that unwillingness continues today. You see, just as God called on Israel to respond to his love, he calls on each and every one of us to take up our cross to follow him, which is simply a matter of saying no to me, saying no to self and yes to God during our day. He asks us to respond to his love by simply loving him back. The Bible says that we love God because he first loved us. And you know, even so, we sometimes respond to that love with rejection. Sometimes there are those who want absolutely nothing to do with God. In fact, they despise the very mention of his name. Turn on our news, Lord have mercy. Aaron Burr, who was our third vice president, was reared, raised in a godly home. Did you know that his grandfather was Jonathan Edwards? who pinned sinners in the hands of an angry God, which was the catalyst for the Great Awakening? Can you imagine having that rich spiritual heritage in your life and family? And Jonathan admonished Aaron at a very early age to accept Christ and to follow him, and Aaron refused to listen. Instead, he rejected God. He wished basically, that God would just leave him alone. And although Burr did achieve political success, his life was filled with strife and hate. We know that, uh, you may not know the age, but we know that at 48, he killed Alexander Hamilton in a duel. And throughout his life, he remained pretty much unhappy, discontent, Toward the end of his life, Burr told a group of friends, you know, 60 years ago, I told God that if he would leave me alone, I would leave him alone. And he hasn't bothered me since. Sad to say, but ultimately he got what he wanted. Our God is patient with our mistakes he is long-suffering with our stumbles. He doesn't get angry at our questions. And he doesn't turn away when we struggle. But when we repeatedly reject his message, when we are insensitive to his pleadings, when he changes history itself to get our attention, and we still don't listen, he simply honors our request. Not a very good place to be. Some respond to God's love with indifference, a kind of apathy. They say that they love God, but then they live as though they are unaware, as though he is not even present. Perhaps they have become out of touch with divine love but preoccupied with finding a quest for human love. Or perhaps earthly priorities consume their energy and their time while the fire of their faith grows colder and colder. And before long, neglect becomes abuse of the divine love that has been shown to them, the cost of God's journey of love depreciating with each passing day. We think about our property, our cars, our houses, maybe 
appreciation, appreciate being, um, appreciate, I can't even say it. We think about them going up in value, thank you, Jesus, and or else that value being depreciated. But have we ever thought about how it is that we can allow the cost that has been paid to show us the love that is free, being in a place of letting the value of it depreciate. Brothers and sisters, an attitude of indifference to the love of God is just as bad as outright rejection. In spite of our rejection and indifference, no matter how bad we've been, no matter how unfaithful we've been, God still loves us. Unbelievable, isn't it? In the relationship between David and Absalom, there's this story of a parent's unconditional love. Absalom rebelled against David. He conspired to overthrow his father and make himself king. Absalom went out and he won the hearts of the people and David was forced to flee for his life and from his own son, his own beloved son. And when David and his followers fought back, they eventually turned the tide of the battle, but in doing so, Absalom was dead. In 2 Samuel, we read, the king was shaken. He went up to the room over the gateway and wept. And as he went, he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. David's heart was filled with love for his son Absalom in spite of his rebellion, his betrayal, and God still loves the sinner today. He calls on him or her to repent, to turn around, to turn back to him, to God, to his love, to the relationship if we have strayed. Some respond to God's love with rejection. Some respond to God's love with indifference. And yet, some respond to God's love with acceptance. The Bible says, greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for a, who? A friend? For God so loved the, that he gave his only begotten son. God demonstrates his love this way, that while we were yet, Christ died for the ungodly. The love that God has for his creation is, we can't even fathom it. Greater is his love than any love we could desire, that we could imagine, that we could hope for for ourselves in the human realm. And when we accept God's love, we find that our lives are made complete. And though we too have rebelled against God, by his grace and the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we find pardon and peace. It is then his love received that motivates our love. During the early days of the Civil War, a Union soldier was arrested on charges for desertion. He was unable to prove his innocence, so he was condemned and sentenced to die a deserter's death. But somehow his appeal found its way to the desk of Abraham Lincoln. And the president felt mercy for the soldier. That is a pardon of Abraham Lincoln's on the screen, but I don't know that it is related to this individual. I'm sure he pardoned more than one. So feeling mercy for the soldier, he signed the request for pardon. And the soldier went right back into the battlefield fighting the entirety of the war that remained, only to be killed in the very last battle. And when they ministered to him, they found in his breast pocket that signed letter of the president. Close to the heart of the soldier were the leader's words of pardon. 
on the Mount of Olives in Israel, there is a chapel that is erected commemorating Jesus' lament over Jerusalem. The sides are in the shape of tears, and inside the chapel is a mosaic of a white hen with a halo and its wings outspread with chicks gathered near her at her feet. And with words of scripture written in Latin, the last phrase is set apart in red. And you were not willing. During the journey of Lent, we take the lament of Jesus seriously. Brothers and sisters, so many people out there that we can't relate to, that we don't understand, that maybe keep us on our knees. I hope they keep, them, they keep us on our knees. Who we would maybe like to be separate from. Jesus has lamented over all of us. <laughs> And there is always the hope for repentance, the hope of receiving God's love. But for ourselves, we can ask ourselves, am I breaking the heart of God in any way with either a rejection of his love or part of his love or having a simple indifference to it, maybe not all the time, sometimes, then I must look the cross where I see a God who desired to gather me to himself he so desired to gather you and I and the many as we say in our communion liturgy to himself that he laid down his life he gave up his life. Nobody took it from him. He gave it up out of the great love, out of great sacrifice, and out of the great hope of life everlasting. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God loves you. He loves me. He gave his only son to die for us. When we rebelled, he remained steadfast. When we were unfaithful, he remained faithful. And above all, he loved. He loves. He loves you today, and he calls all of us to himself. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Lord, we thank you for the price that has been paid. We thank you for the enormity of your love unfailing, forever faithful, always there for us in the same measure, no matter what we have done, no matter what we have failed to do. Lord, help us to go deeper in our relationship with you, to experience more of the love that you have for us not just to hold for ourselves, but to be transformed by it so that through us, the world can be transformed. Lord, you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Lord, we give ourselves to you. We give of our resources to you. Lord, in this season of Lent, continue with us in the journey, a journey of love, a journey of transformation, a journey of reaching out to others who don't comprehend, who don't know your sacrifice or your love. 
Use us, Lord, right where we are with all that you have taught us to reach out to the persons in this community. Show us your way. Show us the way in which to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. remain standing for our last hymn number 292 what wondrous love is this
brothers and sisters, in this season of Lent, leading through Holy Week and all the way to Easter, may you realize the depth and the fullness of the love of God for you. And may we be open and receptive to the ways that God may want us to show it to someone else as we go through our week. Maybe in our sense of community, we can inspire each other on and encourage each other to do that. And if we stumble, it's okay. God still loves us. Just keep trying, right? Just try, keep trying to love as God loves. And he will honor that in you and through you. Brothers and sisters, go into the beauty of this day in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.